So this seems to be a running tradition of mine. Every single time the newest DJI drone comes out, I like to share with you what I believe are the best settings to fly. Now I've been using the Mavic Air, flying the Mavic Air every single day for the past week and a half. I love it. It's a ton of fun. And I've really familiarized myself with the drone and all of its new settings that have come along with it. Now this video is going to be a fairly long one. I'm going to be walking through the entire DJI Go 4 application, showing you what I believe are the best settings and the settings I use to fly my Mavic air so with that being said if you guys want to go ahead pause this video boot up your drone and walk through the application with me it'll probably help you understand what some of the settings mean and also what are the best settings to use on your Mavic Air all right, so jumping into the DJI Go 4 application on our mobile device, I guess the first group of settings we'll go through are the camera settings, which can be located uh, by that little icon with the three lines and the three dots underneath of the record and the shutter button. So we've got three different tabs here. The first tab deals with our camera values, such as ISO and shutter speed. Now this is all gonna be dependent on the lighting conditions outside, your shooting conditions. It's not like I have like a set ISO or shutter speed. This is gonna be changed on the fly, again, depending on those shooting conditions outside side. The next tab marked by a camera icon, uh, the first thing we have to change is our video size which deals with the resolution as well as the frame rate that we are shooting in. I personally always like to shoot in the highest frame rate at the highest resolution possible. So right now I'm shooting in 4K at 30 frames per second. You could go drop down to 1080p which is full HD and shoot at 120 frames per second if you want to capture that smooth slow motion. But in my opinion when shooting drone footage I always like to capture it in the highest resolution possible at the highest frame rate possible, which again is 4K at 30 frames per second. Next up, underneath of video size, we have our video format. We have two different options, MP4 and MOV, and this is all dependent on what type of editing machine that you use. So if you use a Mac like me, you're going to want to use .MOV, but if you're editing on a PC, switch on over to .MP4. It's all about what's going to be most compatible with the device that you edit on. Uh, next up, we've got our white balance, and this is going to, again, change on the fly. We've got a bunch of different options here, and I found that using auto uh, kind of gives you some hell when you go into post-production and try to color correct all of your footage as you could be different, or you could be shooting in a different white balance for all your clips, and it gets a little bit messy. So in my opinion, I always alternate between sunny and cloudy. Whatever it's like outside, go ahead and choose that one. So if it's sunny outside, choose sunny. If it's cloudy, choose cloudy. And I've also noticed that if you're shooting at nighttime, shooting in fluorescent will work pretty good. Uh, next up, our style. I've got zeros across the board. I change all of this in post. This basically has to deal with your contrast, your sharpness, um, and also your saturation. And again, I have all of these set to zero. That's going to give you the best picture, in my opinion. And then from there, if you want to tweak the sharpness, contrast, saturation, etc., etc., you can do all of that with your editing software in post. Now, next up, we have our color profile, and we only have two things to choose from, decent-alike and normal. I like to use normal just because it's easy to color grade once you get into post, and also so it's going to be the best looking footage to share straight out of the camera. So if you want to go ahead, load your footage onto your computer and share with your friends through Facebook or something like that, you really won't need to do a lot of work to that footage or to that picture uh, to make it look good. Now moving on, the third and final tab is going to be where we have some of our miscellaneous camera settings. So first of all, we have our histogram. Uh, that's that little box I'm dragging around on the screen right there. And that'll give us a detailed look at our exposure value. And I always recommend turning that on if you're going to be shooting in manual mode. Next up, smart arm LEDs. I've got this turned on so that when you're flying around and you go to take a picture or a video, those LEDs on the front of the drone will turn off and not get in the way of your shot. Sometimes when shooting at nighttime, if you've got those red LEDs on, it gives you this red haze around the image. Again, I've got those turned off so that never happens. Next up, we've got overexposure warning. This is very annoying in my opinion. Uh, basically, if you have anything in your shot that's overexposed, it gives you the zebra pattern. I've got it turned off. If you guys are afraid of uh, having too bright of a shot or overexposed, then you can turn that on. But again, when flying, super annoying. Next up, video caption. I've got that turned off. Uh, then we've got grid, and you can choose between grid lines and grid plus diagonals. Again, this is something that gets a little bit annoying. You can go ahead and turn this on really quickly so you can see if the horizon is level with your shot. But in my opinion, I like to have this turned off when I fly because those lines on the screen can get pretty annoying and in the way. Next up, we've got anti-flicker. And this is something that's been really confusing me ever since I first got my Mavic Air. Um, 
So on the Mavic Pro, on the Phantom 4 Pro, the Spark, all the other drones I've flown, it's only had the option of 50 hertz and 60 hertz, although it says off. So if you guys could give me uh, some insight as to what this means down in the comments, that would definitely be much appreciated. That's like the one thing I'm stuck on. Uh, next up, we have our file index mode. You can choose between reset and continuous. So this has to do with the file names that your drone will export. So with reset, it's always going to reset to DJI 0001 when you clear the card. But if you have continuous on, it's going to continue to build those numbers which I like to have turned on so if you go and dump your footage on a hard drive or dump it onto a computer's hard drive uh, it's not going to overwrite some of the files that you've already created. Next up under file index mode we've got save unstitched pano photos. I like to turn this on so that all those photos it takes will be saved in a folder on the SD card and I can go ahead and stitch them myself to the computer if I wanted to. Uh, next up, the final thing we have here, storage location. You can choose between an SD card or internal storage. With the Mavic Air, we can now uh, store stuff on that internal storage on the Mavic Air itself. And you guys can go ahead and choose whatever you wish. If you forget it, an SD card, you can always choose internal storage. Um, but again, this option for you to choose is there. Alright, so now that we know what the best camera settings are for shooting with our drone, it's time to jump into some of the other settings that deal with flying the drone. So we can access these by clicking on the three dots in the top right corner. This will bring us to the general settings. And the first thing we can change is our measurement unit. I've got mine set to Imperial. This is miles per hour and feet. But if you want to, you can go ahead and switch over to metric if that's what you're used to. Next up, we've got live streaming. Uh, and this actually has nothing to change underneath of it. But if we click on this, we can choose to live stream to Facebook, YouTube, and some other sites. So if you want to do some live streaming in the future, this is where you do it. Next up, under map, we've got cache map in the background. I've got this turned on. What this does is it essentially saves the map locally to your phone. And this is perfect if you ever run out of service or you know you're going somewhere where there is no cell service. Uh, this definitely comes in handy and I would totally recommend turning it on. Next up, we have video cache. I've got this turned off. Essentially, what video cache does is it saves your photos and uh, your videos that you take with your drone in a low resolution on your phone itself. And this is good for viewing if you if you want to. Uh, so let's say you go take some pictures, you land your drone, and while you're walking to your car or something like that, you can go ahead and view everything that you've shot. This is cool, but I've found that it eats up a lot of battery and a lot of storage on your phone. So for those two reasons, I've turned it off. Next up, we've got other, and under here we've got our device name, so I've set mine to Billy's Mavic Air, but you guys can set it to whatever you want. Next up, full screen, you can choose between double finger and single finger, and what this essentially does is chooses how you're going to hide the HUD or the heads up display. So if we go back to that main screen, I've got mine set to double finger, so I'm going to swipe with two fingers on the screen, and you'll notice everything moves out of the way. You can set this to one finger if you want, but for some reason I found that I'll accidentally swipe with one finger and everything goes out of the way. So if I want to to deliberately move everything out of the way, I will swipe with two fingers. Jumping back into the general settings, the last thing we have is our about page. And if we click on the about page, it's going to give us some information on serial numbers, firmware versions for all of our stuff, like our controller, um, our drone itself, the Mavic Air, and also the DJI Go app we're running on the mobile device. After those general settings, we've got our gimbal settings, and the first thing that we can change is our gimbal mode. We have two different options to choose from follow and FPV. Follow is going to keep that camera aligned with the horizon no matter where you move. If it's side to side, forward, backward, it's going to give you that nice straight cinematic shot. But with FPV, if we go from side to side, moving left and right, the camera is going to bank along with the drone, giving you that FPV feel. So if you guys are going to be flying with FPV goggles, maybe you want to go and choose FPV. But if you want to get that nice cinematic footage we're going to be using follow now next up we can jump into the advanced settings and we've got three different configurations so you can kind of set different gimbal configurations uh, so you can choose on the fly which you want to use we've got configuration one two three etc etc you can go through and change all these settings differently for each configuration anyway what all this means uh, first of all is the max gimbal pitch speed. So this is going to allow the gimbal to actually move up and down. It's going to let you choose how fast you want it to move up and down. I've got mine set to 25, which is fairly low. If you go all the way up to 100, it's going to shoot up and down really quickly. It's going to be really hold, really hard to control. So in my opinion, going a little bit lower is good. Again, I like to use 25. Next up, extend gimbal tilt limit. This will allow the drone's camera or the drone's gimbal to tilt up an extra 30 degrees, but be careful if you're shooting video as the propellers will definitely get in the way. 
finally, gimbal pitch smoothness. This allows you to choose how uh, smooth the gimbal will start and stop. So let's say we go all the way down to zero, the gimbal will immediately start, and once you take your hand off of the wheel, it's gonna come to an immediate stop. So I've got mine up a little bit, I've got it set to 20, so that as I begin moving downwards, it comes to a gradual start and a gradual stop. So that's all for the gimbal settings. Uh, let's see, moving on here, to our aircraft battery. There's not a lot to change in this menu. It's kind of just a bunch of different information about your battery, such as the volts, the temperature, etc., etc. But there is one thing that we can change, and that is the low battery warning. This is basically when, in the top left corner, it starts blinking red, saying you've got low battery, and when it starts beeping in your ear, that annoying beeping. Now, I've set this all the way down to 15%, kind of living life on the edge here, uh, if you ask me. But anyway, you can go all the way up to 50% if you want to, but I find that super annoying. Uh, you know, flashing red and beeping all the way at 50%. So again, I've got the set all the way down to 15% so that I don't have to deal with that annoying noise. Moving on from the aircraft battery, next up we have our Wi-Fi settings, and we can choose between automatic and custom. And I'll tell you right now, going with automatic is going to be the easiest, as it's going to allow the drone itself to search for the clearest channel, the channel with less frequency. If we go to custom, it's going to make us choose, uh, it's going to make us scroll down and choose our channel index, which is very annoying having to do as you're flying your drone, because not only do you have to worry about flying it, you've got to worry about getting those cool shots with your camera, and then on top of that, worry about choosing which channel has less frequency. Frequency. Now, I could see this being uh, helpful in the future if you're flying with multiple people and you're noticing a lot of interference. But again, I go ahead, flip this on auto, and let the drone find the best channel for me. Next up, after the Wi-Fi settings, we've got our remote controller settings. And first of all, we can choose our stick mode. We have three different modes, and we can even set custom stick controls if we want to. I myself fly on mode two. This is a bit of a personal preference thing. I believe I had someone comment and say that they like to use mode three because it's like they're flying a helicopter on on a video game and Xbox, that totally makes sense, but I think most people out there are probably going to be flying with mode 2. Next up, after stick mode, we've got button customization, and this has to do with the FN button on the front of the controller, and also the C button on the back of the controller. So first of all, with my FN button, I've got this set to battery info, so if I'm here on the main screen and I click FN, the battery info will shoot right from the side. This allows me to monitor the temperature, the voltage, uh, and also just the capacity of the battery to make sure that my drone is not going to come falling out of the sky. Uh, the next thing we can choose uh, is the C button, and I've got this set to gimbal recenter, so this will allow the drone's camera to shoot straight forward if need be. So let's say I'm looking downwards, I'm flying forward, and I really quickly want to see what's in front of me. All I need to do is click the C button, and the drone's camera will boom, shoot right looking forward. Now there is a bunch of different things to choose from here. You guys can go through uh, and see you know, which one you like the best. In my opinion, I do think that battery info and gimbal recenter are both the most useful. But again, go ahead, try them out, and see which one you like best. Moving on from the remote controller settings, we are going to get into the visual navigation settings. This has to deal with the obstacle avoidance of the drone and also the VPS, which are the visual positioning sensors. So first of all, enable obstacle avoidance. I've got this turned on so that as I'm flying around, the drone will be able to pick up objects if it's in front of it, underneath of it, or behind it. And I have this on as sort of a safety feature. Sometimes I'll go ahead and turn them off if I'm trying to get a really tight shot in an area where it keeps saying that I've got something in front of me or something under me or anything like that. Um, but again, I've got this turned on just in case. Moving on, enable horizontal obstacle avoidance in tap to fly. I've got this turned on so that during the intelligent flight mode, tap to fly, when the drone is flying by itself, forwards, downwards, really wherever you tap, it's going to be able to see what's in front of it and come to a stop just in case. Again, when the drone's flying itself, I always like the obstacle avoidance sensors to be on. Moving on, enable backward flying. This will allow the drone to fly backwards during the active track intelligent flight mode. I've got this turned on. You have those two sensors along the back, so just in case it's gonna run into anything, it'll pick that up. But again, having a drone be able to fly backwards as you're in active track mode really does give you a cool feel. Uh, next up, enable obstacle avoidance in active track. I've got this turned on. I think that if you're gonna allow the drone to fly itself in active track, and let's say you've got the remote controller over there, and you're walking, having the drone fly itself, you always want those sensors to be on as the drone is flying itself. It's not gonna know what's around it, but if you have those sensors on, it will know what's around it. 
Uh, next up, display radar chart. I've got this turned on. It can be a little bit annoying. It's like up there with the overexposure warning. So if I go back to the home screen, you notice underneath it there, it says three feet and it gives me like the colors and whatnot. Again, it can be a little bit annoying, but that's when I know something is near. And once I see that annoying flash or that annoying, uh, you know, display radar on my screen, I know something is near and I need to be careful. Uh, so again, jumping into the navigation settings, we'll go to the advanced settings. And this kind of has to do uh, with, again, the advanced settings that deal with your obstacle avoidance sensors and your VPS sensors. So first of all, enable vision, vision positioning. This is going to allow the drone to fly a lot more stably. So this enables those VPS sensors underneath and it's gonna be able to look down at the ground and keep your drone stable even in high winds. I would highly recommend turning that on as it definitely helps you fly around. Next up, landing protection. This is going to allow the drone to check the area when it's on its return to home uh, stage or its, its return to home phase. When it's coming down and landing, it's going to check the area to make sure that it's clear. And I've tested this before by standing directly underneath of the drone. And as it's coming down, it gave me a little prompt on my screen that it was not a safe area to land. So what I did is took control and landed it myself. And that's definitely cool. If you want to trust your drone to land itself, you want to make sure it's landing in a safe place. So definitely turn that on. Next up, RTH obstacle check. Again, when the drone is autonomously flying itself coming home, you want it to make sure that it's checking out for obstacles and avoiding them. I've got this turned on, and whenever the drone is flying itself, again, make sure those sensors are on. All right, so now we're moving on to our seventh and final tab marked by the quadcopter icon. These are the main controller settings, and this is sort of like the ending miscellaneous settings tab. Uh, so first of all, remote identification. I made a full video on this. I'll put a link to it up in the top right corner, uh, and also I'll put one down in the description so you guys can check this out. I'm not going to go over this in this video. Uh, it kind of has a whole story behind it. So again, go check that out if you're interested. Next up, we've got our basic settings. We've got the home point settings. This allows us to set the home point to where the drone is. That's going to be that triangle icon. So you can change the home point to where the drone currently is, or you can change it to where you are with the controller. That's kind of marked by that person icon. Next up, multiple flight modes. I've got this turned on. This allows me to fly around in sport mode if I want to uh, by flipping this little switch right here in the middle of the controller. So if you guys want to fly fast in sport mode, be sure that this is turned on. Next up, return home altitude. I've got this set to 90 meters. This is essentially 300 feet, and I found that this is perfect. It's not going to have to go all the way up to 400 feet to come all the way back, uh, and 300 feet will usually get you over any obstacle that's around you. I've never been flying around trees that are like over 200 -ish feet, um, but again, I've got this set to 90 meters or 300 feet, which I found is perfect uh, for any obstacles you may encounter. But again, do some surveying before you go and officially set this. Uh, next up, under flight restrictions, I've got beginner mode turned off. If you're a good pilot, you're going to want to turn that off to get the full power of your drone. But if you've just bought your Mavic Air and you've never flown a drone before, be sure to turn that on and fly around with it on uh, for the first couple of days to get used to flying your drone. Next up, set max flight altitude. I've got this set at 150 meters. The legal limit is 400 feet. That's going to be about 120 meters, but I have it set to 150 meters just in case when I'm coming back, I need to go over an obstacle or two. Uh, again, I've got this set to 150 just in case. Next up, enable max distance. I've got this turned off as I find that pretty annoying. It's going to like hit a virtual wall if you go like past 700 feet or something like that. Maybe you want to turn it on if you've got restrictions around you. But again, I've got this turned off so I can fly basically as far as I want to or as far as the drone will let me. Uh, next up, advanced settings. First of all, these EXP settings, they're really, really tough to understand. I made a full video on this again. I'm not going to sit here and explain these for 10 minutes. Go ahead and check those out. Link will be up in one of these corners. And also, I'll put that down in the description. Next up, our sensors. This is going to give us a way to check the status of our sensors. And nothing to change in here. It's kind of like that uh, battery um, tab. If you guys want to, go ahead into the IMU uh, settings or the IMU screen here and check how the... Um, how it's going, I guess, how how all that is running. And also you can go into the compass. Again, there's really nothing to change here. Uh, next up, we've got our cinematic mode. We can choose our gain and yaw sensitivity. It comes on these uh, by default, 10.0 and 50.0. I never really mess around with them because I never really use cinematic mode to me. Uh, it just kind of seems dumb. Uh, but if you guys want to, go ahead, change those. I really haven't tweaked them whatsoever. And then finally, 
For the final setting, we have under other, it's remote, remote controller signal loss. I've got mine set to return to home so that if my drone ever comes disconnected from the remote controller, it's going to come back to me. I find that that is the best thing to have on so your drone doesn't, let's say, you know, land somewhere or hover somewhere where you can't get to it. But if you guys are flying inside, you might want to go ahead and hit hover or land so that if you lose connection inside of a building, it won't return to home. It won't fly up into the ceiling. Uh, so again, that's sort of situational. But guys, that wraps up this video. I really do applaud you if you sat through this entire thing. Those are, in my opinion, the best settings to use when flying your Mavic Air using the DJI Go 4 application. Be sure in the comment section below uh, to let me know what you think of these settings. Let me know if you change anything. I know that some of these are situational, but again, I would love to hear from you guys. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.